to really synopsize this evening and just provide context of the spelling bee and and uh, the rich history is none other than our good friend Paul Leffler, who's joining us now from Washington D.C. Literally, just you know, a few moments after the broadcast and the after party, uh, Paul, we always appreciate you joining us uh, every year, uh, late nights. Uh, in the aftermath. And what's amazing is that you are literally hosting the show effectively solo. In, in years past, you've been the color commentator and providing all this great uh, commentary. But uh, th- this show is yours, Paul. I was really uh, impressed to not just see you, but your sister at the end. So you got to tell this whole story. It's, uh, it's phenomenal. Well, there's a, a huge team of people that, that made that show possible. And, and first of all, it's the spellers. I mean, that's the captivating thing. I would be fine if you didn't see me the whole show and all you saw was the spellers because they deserve the spotlight. They invest so much time and energy. Their parents, you know, that's what really hits me every year, Robbie, how infested the parents are. They, they not only have the connection with their kids, but they invest in their future. They encourage them to really engage with this competition and pursue greatness and every year we see it and this year was no exception um but yeah they asked me to to shake things up a little bit this year if anybody saw our preliminaries and our quarterfinals and our semifinals there are a lot of opportunities where i got to interview people from the world of the spelling bee and have them kind of join as guest commentators so i I did a a little more play-by-play than i usually do and a little less of the analysis but I had people uh, more qualified to do the analysis, former champs like Vanya Shivashanker and Kavya Shivashanker and Harini Logan, the defending champ, and Zaila Avangard, the basketball wizard who won it all in 2021, and more. And so it was. I think it was really neat this year to get more voices involved um, for the primetime finals. A, a lot of it was me at the desk. But again, the star, um, that's the kids, and they blow me away every year. And I've been doing it long enough that I get to see them grow up and do other great things. You know, I, I mentioned Kavya Shivashankar, and she won in 2009. Well, she's now a, a doctor. She's an OBGYN resident with a couple more years to go in that. And then she'll be joining a practice somewhere and doing her own thing. And, and that's just one example. I mean, all of these young people are destined for greatness what they do in this competition prepares them in so many ways for whatever field they're going to jump into. And it just, it, I would say it inspires me every year to be back here and get to see uh, some of the kids that I've seen before and see how much they've grown, but also just to see how, how bright eyed, how enthusiastic um, it, it reminds you what's special about America in a lot of ways. And it reminds you how bright the future is. And I don't think in today's world, we have enough reminders of that. So this is like a breath of fresh, uh, fresh air for me each year. And you mentioned my sister, this is her first year as executive director. And probably the most satisfying thing for me personally, was running into so many people that worked with her or for her on this this year, and had nothing but wonderful things to say about her leadership and how much she cares for the kids. So on a personal note, I think that was the most satisfying thing for me this year. Paul, Robbie called this the Indian Super Bowl. You're describing this like a sport. So let's get into some of the highlights. Uh, For those of us who may have missed uh, this entire spelling bee, what would you say were some of the uh, top moments, the key moments, the defining moments? Because, you know, we always see the highlights on ESPN or, you know, another, you know, network, and we'll see the, you know, the, the final three contestants always, right? Given those, those words, what, what about, what about this year? Describe what, uh, what you saw. Yeah. And, and in many ways it is like a sport, you know, and, you know, for many years, this competition was on ESPN and, and Kevin Nagandi, um, I mean, he was the first one I heard start calling it the Indian Super Bowl. And he really meant that in a very affectionate fashion. And I think you referred to it on social media again, that way this year. And, and he helped me understand how much it does really mean to the South Asian community. I'd seen it in person with all these families and often been asked about why, what's the connection there. Um, but it is a big deal to every one of these families. And these spellers are just as intense as any great athlete. They have to have discipline. They have to have determination. They have to focus and perform under pressure. And this year, I think that pressure was even greater because the time was reduced. And then they've added in recent years a word meaning round where 
you know, then you're on the spot to choose A, B, or C in 30 seconds, and your future in the competition depends on it, and depends on not only knowing what it means, but picking the right interpretation of what it means in front of you in that short amount of time. Um, the winning word that Dev got in the, the finals was Samophile, and, you know, he knew it as soon as he heard it. In fact, he, he just said sand, Greek, uh, I think is what he said. He was saying, is this the Greek root that means sand? Uh, Samo, P.S., you know, at the start of that. And and he was dead on on that, as he was throughout the competition. But so many of these young people, you know, the runner-up was a, a young lady named Charlotte Walsh, and she got maybe the most difficult word of the competition that knocked her out right before Dev won. Um, Surya Kapu, who was our fifth-place finisher last year, he tied for third and, and had an incredible run. And there's some of these words that you watch the kids and you're not sure if they're going to get it or not, and they come through in the end, and it's spectacular. And, you know, I, I know Robbie's a big uh, Bay Area guy, and the Bay Area was very strongly represented this year. Three of the final 11 were all from the Bay Area. They had all competed against each other before they got here. They weren't able to settle it uh, back home in the Bay. They ended up in a three-way tie, but their sponsorship there, the Rotary Club of San Ramon Valley, had already sponsored three potential entrants in the competition so they didn't have to settle it um i mean i could go on and on with how incredible these kids are but that winning moment is always special and, and there was a little bit of a suspense i would say wondering if it was going to go to a spell off like it did last year last year was the first time ever that there had been this lightning round this spell off of here's 90 seconds how many words can you spell in that amount of time and spell correctly and of course harini logan ended up as that first ever spell off champion. She was back this year. She spent a lot of time with us on air, did a phenomenal job. And I think she was ready to see who would follow in her footsteps, but it needed, it didn't need a spell off when Deb was able to win in the traditional way. So Paul, tell folks about your history and your involvement with the B. Obviously I have a lot of context knowing you as long as I, I've known you. We both went to Syracuse together, uh, but you have been part of this B since you were a literal child. Your sister is now running the joint, which is an amazing family story. Uh, and, and this obviously B goes back, you know, uh, what, 100 plus years? I mean, it's an incredible story that you and your sister are both so intertwined uh, with this B. Yeah, thanks for taking me back to when I was a literal child. Now I'm just a figurative child. But um, it does go back 95 years. It is the longest running educational contest in America. It's a special piece of Americana, I think. And the thing that excites me the most, it has been a vehicle for young people to chase their dreams for a long, long time. You know, I competed in it in 1990, and that was a life-changing event for me. I mean, I grew up in a small town, the center of the universe, Los Banos, California. And, um, you know, I'd never been to the East Coast. My father, um, at the time I competed in it, you know, had experienced kidney failure. He'd had to close his business. He was on dialysis. We didn't have money to travel anywhere. And I knew that by winning this regional competition, I could get a free trip to Washington, D.C. So I set my mind to it with my mom's help, coaching me up, bribing me with baseball cards for every hour I would study. I was able to make it to Washington, D.C. And I thought that was the prize. I want a free trip. And then she said, well, wait a second. Somebody's paying for your trip. Somebody sponsored this competition. You better keep studying because you have to represent them. And that was a great life lesson. And so I got to come back here to Washington, D.C. and compete in that B back in 1990. We weren't on television yet, thankfully. Although one year, I think ABC dug up some old footage that was uh, entertaining, to say the least. Uh, and, and my little sister came with me on that trip. She's six years younger. And she saw it. And, and she wanted to do it. And my mom was the ultimate spelling bee coach. She, in fact, kept a regional bee going even after we competed and, and just has a heart to serve others and to help people learn. And my younger sister, Corey, uh, competed in the Nationals three times. She came very close to winning it. I think a lot of people thought she might. In her last year here in eighth grade, she dealt with disappointment when she was expected to be one of the contenders. And she went out early on a, a word that just she had never studied because it seem too simple to her. Uh, but one of the neat things the Spelling Bee does is every year they bring in college kids to work for the week and do a lot of the jobs that need doing. And then, you know, they get exposed to a lot of other things, uh, the behind the scenes mechanisms of the bee. Uh, so that was something I did in college in the summer. I got to come work, 
it was fun for me. I got to answer questions from the media, I was looking up information, running errands, and it, it re-engaged me with the B. And you know, some of the people that had operated it when I was in it were still there. Certainly they knew my sister. Um, and I made some connections there. And by that time it was on ESPN. And uh, I got to see some of the behind the scenes of how that worked. And I remember thinking, boy, it'd be fun to announce this someday. And, you know, fast forward a few years, and it was 2006. I had actually turned down some opportunities in local TV to move to bigger markets. Uh, all our family was around, you know, Fresno. And I, I said, I'm from Las Banas. It's about an hour away. So that's, I mean, that's the area where I grew up and where I wanted to stay. And all our family was. And I remember, you know, turning that job down. And, and for me, it's it's a belief that God's plans are better than my plans. And, and I prayed about it and said, you know, God, if you want to put me on a bigger stage, do it in your way, in your timing. And it wasn't too long till I got this phone call in 2006 from a gentleman at ABC Sports. And he said, hey, we're going to take the National Spelling Bee, put it in prime time this year on ABC. We have Robin Roberts from Good Morning America to be our host. But we need someone to announce it with her who knows about the competition. So I, I paused for a minute and thought, which one of my college roommates from Syracuse is totally trying to pull one over on me now because they know I was in this once upon a time. But I must have been the only former Spelling Bee competitor on television anywhere at the time is my guess. And um, long story short, I've gotten to announce it every year on television since then. We didn't have a B in 2020 because of the pandemic. Um, 2021 was the last year on ESPN. And then Scripps, which has its own TV network, said, hey, we think we can do this. And and so this is our second year with the Scripps Networks. We were on Ion and Bounce and a number of other channels. And I just can't say enough about the, the people I've been privileged to work with. And most of all, what a privilege it is to get to know these kids. I mean, I got to spend time with each one of the finalists one-on-one -on -one earlier today. And I'm just so amazed by not just how brilliant they are, but how genuine they are, how real they are. Um, what incredible families they have and the camaraderie they have with each other. I don't know that there's another competition where you'll find that, where they don't just say they're competing against the dictionary, not each other. They really act that way. They really love each other. They really aren't rooting against each other. And that's pretty hard to find, especially in 2023. You talked about 1990. That's like a blast from the past. I mean, I, I, I don't even remember where I was back in 1990. But uh, look, you're a white guy, and we all know that the majority of this spelling bee is now pretty much brown, right? South Asians, Indian Americans. Um, was it like that back then? Uh, help us understand the history. You know, just when did it start to become all Indian? Well, I, I think there was a, a progressive move there. And, and there's some research that, that's that been done. A friend of mine named Shalini Shankar wrote a, a very interesting book about that phenomenon. And I think she really examined it thoroughly. And and that's something people can pull up if they, they want to dive into it further. But, you know, the first South Asian champion was in the mid 80s, Balu Natarajan. And he, I, I think, helped others believe they could. And then, you know, if you think about it with it going into prime time on ABC in the mid 2000s and showcasing a lot of those spellers, um, that certainly added to it. There's a, there's a group called the North South Foundation that is for the South Asian community that runs its own spelling bees. And I was just talking to a parent today who told me that after that 2006 B hit on national TV on over the air TV with ABC, that that North South Foundation had almost a 50% jump in enrollment for their competition. Uh, I talked to another one, one of the parents today. We had a young lady, tremendous young lady from the San Jose area named Shraddha Rasham Reddy. And you know, her father was telling me that when he came to America, he went to Texas A&M. He came from India to Texas. And he said there weren't a lot of immigrants from India in school at Texas A&M at the time. And then he turned on the TV and it was the 2000 spelling bee and my friend George Thampy, who now lives in San Francisco, was hanging out with him tonight. He's one of the judges for the bee now, uh, but was a great champion back in 2000. There he is on TV winning the bee. And this gentleman saw that almost like a lifeline. He said, hey, this is something that someone like me can engage with in this new country of mine. And everybody has their own story. And I think in my mind, it's always been less about what your last name is, what color your skin is, but what your priorities are. 
And I, I think what has defined every one of those South Asian champions and the competitors who come from that community is there's a priority in that family placed on education. There's a willingness on the part of the parents to get involved, whether they're coaching the speller personally or these days, a lot of former spellers are for hire as spelling coaches and advisors and technology has allowed that, that you know, to be much more convenient. So you have, you know, a lot of these families, it's not just mom, it's not just dad, it's mom, dad, and siblings. And they've all found something that they can collaborate on and they're all invested in how that student does. And that's another thing we've seen over the years. Not only does the, the experience you gain by being here at the nationals one year work in your favor in the future, a lot of times you'll have multiple siblings from the same family who end back here. You know, like my sister and I, where there's a residual knowledge that is acquired and one sibling can benefit from the work of another. And I think that's one of the reasons we've seen a couple families where multiple siblings are champions. The Shiva Shanker sisters, certainly. And earlier today, I saw Jairam Hathwar, who uh, he and his older brother Sriram are also both champions. So uh, to me, it's, it's as much about family and priorities as it is about anything else. So Paul, for the average family, the average parent who has no acumen about how to lead a child down this path of getting to Washington, let alone winning a spelling bee, what suggestions do you have? I mean, what age do they start at? Should they just get a dictionary and read? Is there any kind of tutelage you can give us? Well, grabbing a dictionary and, and diving in is never a bad idea. I think, you know, you, you need to know your kid and, and his or her personality, but it's okay to give them a little nudge, encourage them to compete and see how they do. Some of the finalists today, those were the stories they told me. And in one case, it was a third grade teacher who encouraged them and just put them in a competition. Another case, it was the parents in kindergarten getting them started. Or another one, when he was in second grade, they called the middle school and said, hey, can our second grader compete against your sixth, seventh, and eighth graders? And that second grader got sixth place, believe it or not. So it's about knowing how your kid is wired. But, you know, it's a chance to give them some dreams and then just, you know, give them the framework, some ideas of what to study. You can find all that readily online as far as basic building blocks and where to start your studies. But I think the real value is not in the $50,000 top prize or being on national TV or any of that. It's in what it trains you for. It helps you build great study habits. It, it builds a work ethic, a discipline, a focus. And the, the breadth of knowledge that you end up acquiring is, to me, the biggest prize of all. I, I know friends who, because of the spelling bee, uh, they did very well in medical school. They're doctors, maybe they're lawyers, they're uh, physicists, they're sports writers, just about anything the skills that you need that you develop in order to succeed in the spelling bee are going to serve you well anywhere. You're not wasting your time just memorizing words you're never going to use before. You're learning the stories behind words. And Ravi, you know that uh, there's power in words. And if you really want to realize the, the true power of a word, you dive in. You learn what it means. You learn how it's been used. You learn where it comes from. And that can really serve you well in just about any field. Makes you a better communicator, gives you more common ground with people that you may encounter. Uh, it's I can't say enough about it. Dr. Bailey, the pronouncer, often refers to it as a gateway skill, and I couldn't agree more. If you put in the time and, and develop the skills it takes to succeed with the spelling bee, they're going to translate to just about any field you decide on. Paul, while we got you for the final few minutes here, look, you're a local TV news guy who's now pivoted onto this national stage, really. Um, I mean, do you still consider yourself a journalist at this point? But also, um, I want to get your thoughts on the state of the TV news industry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Ravi and I talk about this all the time. We're having to constantly reinvent ourselves. Um, you know, it seems like uh, with social media now, it's really democratized everything. And we're starting to realize a lot of these local TV stations owned by a handful of corporate conglomerates are basically failing. And you have these great journalists now ejecting. And if you look at the pipeline in J schools, you don't have the same robust pipeline that was there when we were all coming up. So anyway, I know that was kind of a mouthful and a lot to process, but I don't know if you still think about that. Um, what, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts on the state of the news industry and the future of TV news? 
You know, that's a big question. It's it's a very different world than when I was coming out of Syracuse 25 years ago. Um, you know, back then you needed to work for a station to have a voice, basically, to have an outlet. And you need to uh, you needed to earn your chops. You needed to show that you deserved that opportunity. You had some standards. You'd been to school. You'd acquired this or that. Um, I think there are a lot of people doing great journalism on social media and as an independent voice, but the gatekeeper phenomenon has really left us now, right? There, anybody with a social media account can get their voice out there, and that has its pros and it con its cons, and it puts a lot more responsibility on the consumer to be able to vet information and to be able to determine what's authentic, what's not, what is sincere, what is cynical, and there can be a, a pretty broad spectrum with that. You know, so most of the work I do now, I do a lot of sports play-by-play, -play, you know, on radio. And who knows, maybe that's a dying art. They tried to get rid of AM radios and cars there. So I, I don't know how that's going to work in the future. But what I, you know, what I enjoy is the privilege of telling stories. And this week I got to, you know, at least tell some of the story of these incredible spellers that are going to go on to do great things. I, I do a show when I travel for sports. I interview World War II veterans wherever I go, and I have a, a syndicated radio show called Hometown Heroes. And, you know, in that case, I'm hoping to preserve some stories and introduce them to a whole new audience so we know what the price that was paid for our freedom. So I've been really blessed to be able to, to work in areas where I think they really matter. But I do think local news matters. I think people need local news. If you lose local news, um, you know, there are times where you really notice it. Emergencies, certainly that comes to mind. But the everyday, you know, if there aren't local journalists keeping elected leaders accountable, um, telling the stories that no one else is going to tell, what does that do for society? And what does that do for history? What are we going to say 50 years from now if we look back and there's no newspaper or video archive or record of what happened in a community? Um, there could be a pretty big vacuum there that we end up with long term. So I, I think that's a question that I don't know if I'm qualified to answer, but it's one that certainly in my mind needs to be examined. I think you're plenty qualified, Paul. Uh, Paul's obviously, you can tell, one of the nicest guys in the business, uh, also has a very mean jump shot. Uh, we should be talking NBA finals, uh, but this guy really uh, can, can shoot hoops. I mean, Cho can as well. Uh, you know, at this age, I don't know if the three of us should still be on the court. Paul probably can can probably still hit a step back three on on us, but uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Lighter, maybe, but yeah, I, I know it's 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 terrible. You, you stay with basketball, you hit get to a point where like, wow, I really can't play anymore. Like I'm just terrible. So that's uh, that's no fun. But uh, Paul's one of the best guys in the business, and always uh, great to see you. And I gotta say, I got a real kick out of seeing you and your sister on the sets uh, of the Spelling Bee. That was really kind of a hometown family moment. I mean, Scripps is, you know, kind of a family owned company as well, even though it's this huge conglomerate. And, and hopefully this is my uh, push to Scripps. And I know some of the leadership there and I've met some of the folks over the years. Uh, we would love to have an Indian flavored spelling bee version on Dia TV. It can be just piggybacked off all the other networks you guys have, but I think it'd be a lot of fun. And we'll drag Paul, you know, afterwards and like, Paul, give us the breakdown. And Paul's like, all right, I'll do it for you, Ravi. But uh, we always appreciate you coming on, Paul. Uh, thanks for the breakdown. Uh, another uh, great event. And uh, congratulations to you and your sister. I mean, that's uh, an incredible accomplishment for you both. Well, I'll just say, since you brought it up, Ravi, that, that uh, again, that's the most satisfying thing for me this year. Um, my sister is, is an amazing person. She's a phenomenal speller, the best in the family. But what I got to see this week is that she's a tremendous leader and she has the respect of her peers, um, the respect to the people that she's engaged with in every corner of this competition. And I, I really think that she was born and built to do exactly what she's doing right now. So to be able to see that, to, uh, to think about the hours that my mom put in with both of us, uh, the time my, my late father, who's been gone for 25 years, um, the time he spent praying for and encouraging her and, and how wrapped up he was in it when she competed. Um, that put a big smile on my face today to see her knock it out of the park in her first year running the B. And it also makes me think, boy, um, what the future looks like. And I think the best is yet to come for Scripps and the B, especially with Corey having that opportunity. So um, 
yeah, made me a, a very proud big bro tonight. That's great, Paul. Thank you for the time. Get some rest. Safe travels back to California. We'll talk to you soon. I'll be playing hoops Tuesday morning if you want to come join us. You just uh, give me a text. I I'm going to take you up on that at some point. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks again, Paul. Yeah. <laughs>